This is an overview of NC State's Accessibility Website Scanning Service. My name is Greg Kraus, the IT Accessibility Coordinator. If you want to access the service, just go to the URL go.ncsu.edu slash accessibility dash scan. So what does this do? This service scans the publicly available websites on NC State's campus. It can't scan password protected sites and it doesn't do a very good job evaluating web applications. If you want to evaluate either of those types of items for accessibility, there are other techniques for doing that. On those public websites, it checks those pages against the WCAG 2 and the Section 508 standards. And it will take all the errors that it finds and it will prioritize them for you, showing you which errors are having the biggest impact on your users. The errors that it does find, it will present to you in two different ways. It will show you visually on your page where the errors occur and it will also show you in the, the DOM or the source code where your errors occur. So what other types of information do I get from the scanning service? Well, There's a number of other reports that come with it. You'll get reports on how many broken links you have and where they are in your site, any potentially misspelled words, any coding errors you have. It'll give you some usability recommendations. It'll show you browser compatibility errors. And then finally, it'll give your site an accessibility ranking. So what do you mean by accessibility ranking? Well, first, automated tests cannot fully test a website's accessibility. You have to do manual testing in order to fully assess a website's accessibility. These evaluations simply give you an idea where you sit in relation to other people, other websites on campus. Here are a couple things to remember when you're viewing these reports. First, if you have any questions about the errors that you're seeing, Please ask before you spend hours trying to fix something. Oftentimes there's a simpler solution that you might not know about, or it might just be a misunderstanding of what the error is actually telling you. Also, remember these scans will produce some false positives. So if you see an error listed and you just can't understand why it's reporting that error where it is in the context of the page, it might be a false positive. If you have a question about that, please feel free to ask. One thing to note, if your website is using responsive design, the evaluation tool will evaluate the mobile version of your website. We're working on ways right now to make it so you can evaluate different versions of your website like the desktop version, but for now it only evaluates the mobile version of your site. And the last thing to remember is there are always ways to improve this system, so if you have ideas or find problems with the system, please let me know. Again, to get to your reports or to request your site be added to the scan, just go to the URL go.ncsu.edu slash accessibility dash scan. So let's go see what these reports look like and how to use them. This is the Accessibility Scanning Services website. From here you can either request your site be added to the scan or you can view your site's data if it has been scanned already. So to add your site to the scan, just click on the Request Access to Your Site's Data or Submit a New Site to Scan link. Now we've already scanned over 400 sites, so we might have already scanned your website. So you can browse through this list to see if it's there. And let's say you want access to this site, and this one just put a check mark next to the sites you want access to. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and click Submit. Now you're not automatically granted access to the site's data. We do check the website and who the owner of the site is and who are the people that are actually maintaining the content and we only grant access to those people who are, are either a site owner or are updating the content on the site. Well, Let's say your site wasn't listed on that page. Down at the bottom of the page you can add a new site to the page. So I've got a site, it's an accessibility blog so I just put the name of the site and then I'll put the URL for the site and click Submit. Once again, this isn't an automated process. We're going to look to see what the site is and who the owner is and only grant access to those people who are either owners of the site or maintain content on the site. Either way you submit a site, you'll receive an email confirmation once you've been granted access to it. So now I'm going to go back to the main site, main page. So once your site has been added to the scan, you can view your site's data. So when you come to this page, you're going to see all the sites that you have access to, and you're going to see some snapshot information about them. So you're going to see where your site ranks in terms of all the other sites on campus. You're going to see how many pages are in that site that it scanned. 
you're going to see the number of weighted accessibility errors, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. You're going to see how many broken links are in the site. You're going to see the last time the site was scanned, and you're going to see a link where you can request a rescan of the site. So let's come look at the IT accessibility site. So when you come to this page, you're going to get a lot more detailed information about the site. The first thing I want to look at are the rankings. So with the rankings, you're going to see a couple different rows in the table. You're going to see rows for total weighted errors and weighted errors per page. And then you're going to see something called either sort site or wave. So first, sort site and wave refer to the two different tools that we use to scan the websites for accessibility. The reason we use two different tools is they both scan the site slightly differently and give us slightly different information. Now, for each of those, you're going to see, again, the total weighted errors and weighted errors per page. So what that means is when you see total weighted errors for sort site, that means that's how many errors sort site reported for all of the pages in your site. And they're weighted errors because I've gone through and I've assigned a weighting value to each of the errors. So some errors have a bigger impact on the users of your site and some have a lesser impact. So this will help create a priority list for you in terms of what errors are causing the biggest problems for people on your site. The reason there's a weighted errors per page number is because on campus we have a lot of different sites. Some are very small, some are quite large. And in order to make the comparison a bit more fair, we need to look at how many errors per page are you actually getting. So for each of the different ways of counting the errors, you're going to see a quantity of errors. So in t for total weighted errors for sort site, there are a total of 1,121 weighted errors as opposed to 5.61 weighted errors per page for sort site. Then you'll have a column for the percentile, so it'll show you what percentile you fall into across all the campus websites, and the higher the number, the more accessible you are and then it will show you a rank for your site in terms of each of those categories and where you fall there as well. And you'll see the same type of data for WAVE. And if you're wondering why the WAVE data shows so many more errors, that's because the, the WAVE tool allows us to check for a couple of different things that sort site doesn't. So with WAVE we're able to check for color contrast issues a lot more accurately. And so you're going to see a lot more errors usually pop up with WAVE in terms of just the color contrast problems. So then we have the overall accessibility rank. Now this number, it's not just a straight average of the four other rankings. There's a formula applied that tries to even it out between the small sites and the large sites to make it a bit more equitable across them to say who does have the most accessible site on campus. Again, on this page, you'll see an option for a rescan request. And if you do, click rescan. That'll submit the job. And depending on the size of your site, sometimes the job can be done in as few as 30 minutes. Sometimes it can take longer if it's a larger site. But you'll receive an email once the scan has been completed. So let me go back. And now let's come down and look at some of the reports that are generated. So in the reports, you're going to see reports for accessibility problems, W3C standards, or basically coding errors, uh, usability recommendations, browser compatibility problems, and finally general errors, which includes broken links and potentially misspelled words. Before we jump into detail into the error reports, I do want to scroll down just to show you this historical data section. And this will show you your scans over time, and each date the scan was done and where you ranked after that scan, you'll notice some of the earlier dates will say not applicable and that's because we didn't implement tracking the rankings until later. But you can see your error counts as they'll go up or down over time for all of these different reports. So back to the error reports. So the main one I want to look at is the accessibility error report. So when I click on here it'll take me to my accessibility report. So this page is presenting me with a lot of information. The first thing to note is that this page is organized to show me which errors are having the biggest impact on my users. The ones that are having a bigger impact are sorted to the top of the list versus the ones having a smaller impact are sorted to the bottom of the list. Now there's a number of icons on this page to help give you some additional information. So the first icon I'll talk about is the green eye. 
So if you see a green eye, what that means is that particular error, you'll get to see the error in the context of the page. So you'll see a preview of your page and it'll show you right on the page where that problem occurs. So for instance, I've got very low contrast. So when I click on this link, it's going to show me every single one of my pages where I, that error occurs and it'll be sorted by the number of occurrences. So some of my higher occurrences are listed up here at the top and so let me just click on let me find one that's a good example so if I click on this one this will take me actually to my blog and on this page it's going to list out all of my issues up here across the top and so I've got a button for view issue so if I want to find where that issue is I can click on view issue and it will highlight it on the page or if I click on the next one it'll actually scroll down to where the error occurs and then flash it for you. If you miss it, you can click again and it'll flash it again. Or if you want the source code for where that error occurs, it lists the source code here. Or if you're really interested in the technical details, you can click on the X path and that will tell you the X path where the error actually occurs. While we're on the screen, a couple of other things to note. If you don't understand this issue, there's a button on the bottom for about this issue and that'll bring you a window that will actually explain what is this issue about and what are the things you need to do to correct it. There's also a link to a tutorial on the issue. So if you click on tutorial on color contrast, it'll take you to a brief overview of color contrast and uh, what you need to do to correct that. So now let me go back. So now I'm back to the list of all of my accessibility problems. So a couple other icons to note. So that was the green eye. There's also an orange icon that indicates it's going to show you in the source code where the particular error is. So in this case, I have one down here where it says this form control has no associated label element. I can click here and it's going to show me which pages have that error and then it's going to show me the line numbers in my source code where that happens. So in order to find the error there I will have to go and view that page and view the source and then I can view the line number to go find where that problem is. The reason some of these errors are able to be seen within your page and some of them are only viewable within the source code is because the two different tools that we use, sort site and wave, report the results back to us differently. So depending on which tool generated the error, that will determine how you're able to view that error. Now one very important thing to keep in mind about this is both tools are testing basically for the same types of errors. So sometimes the errors will be listed twice in here. So in this case I have this form control has no associated label element, so it's basically an unlabeled form element and that's what I can tell sort site told me that but if I scroll down a little bit more I can tell wave is telling me the same thing here so if you correct it once it'll get fixed it'll go away from your report in both instances the next time you do a rescan so a couple other icons to help give you some guidance on this page there's an importance column that says how important is this error and you'll either see a red exclamation mark or a yellow question mark so what those mean, when there's a red exclamation mark, that means this is an error. And then you'll see a number out beside it, anything from 0 to 4. 4 being the most important, and 0 being you can probably ignore it. And so for instance, for very low contrast, I can see this is an error, and it's given a 3, so it's an important error. And that's opposed to if I look further down in the page, I can see I have a form control that's missing a label. That's a critical error. So it has a 4 versus the one just below that where it talks about opening new windows and that's it's an error but it's a minor one so it's given a one and that's where the weighting comes in to show you which errors are having a bigger impact on your users then there's the question marks and the question marks can mean one of two things it can mean either that this may be an error and the automated tool is not able to definitively say whether it's an error so it's going to take you going and checking to see is this actually an error or not the other thing it could mean is that while this might not technically be an accessibility error, it might be impacting your users from a usability standpoint. So while it's not necessarily breaking any of the rules in Section 508 or the WCAG 2 guidelines, it is having a negative impact on your users. And just so you know, when the rankings are compiled for the sites, 
the only things that are actually counted are the errors, so the exclamation points. The, the warnings, the question marks, aren't actually tallied up to determine the rankings for all of the sites. That doesn't mean you should ignore them, but because there's the possibility of having lots of false positives in that group of errors, they're not counted in the rankings. So just like I showed you on the other page where you could view a tutorial, you can also get to the same tutorial straight from this page. Or you can also view some additional notes about that particular error. So just to show you a little bit more about the system, let me come look at another error. For instance, missing form label. Again, it'll list my pages where that occurs the most. And so let me click on this first one. So again, it's going to list out all the issues. And if I click on one of them, it'll scroll down to it and highlight it. Now, with the system with the scrolling, sometimes the scrolling doesn't work perfectly. So for some of these, it will work. But I happen to know on this page, when I click on issue number seven, it's actually down here. But when I click on it, the scrolling is off. So it's not always 100%, but it usually does work. And for those cases where the scrolling is not working, we're still trying to figure out why it's not exactly working in all of those instances. Now these particular errors were generated by the Wave Tool. Now since the Wave Tool is actually a free tool online, you can actually go ahead and view this entire report in the Wave Tool if you want. So for each page, there's an Analyze with Wave link at the bottom. So if you click on that, it'll actually take you to the Wave Tool that WebAIM runs, and it'll show you all of the errors for a particular page. So you can click through and find your errors this way if you want. Let me show you one other case that you might come across. So I'm going to go back to my low contrast. And on this page, I have a lot of color contrast problems. But if I click on the issues, it's scrolling, but I don't actually see them. Sometimes if you don't see them, it might be because the error is actually hidden off screen. So in this case, it's all of these submenus where the errors occur. So if you don't see the error on screen, it might be hidden somewhere. So hopefully this gave you a good overview of the Accessibility Website Scanning Service. Again, to get to it, just go to the URL go.ncsu.edu slash accessibility dash scan. And if you have any questions, you can email me at it-access at ncsu.edu.